Hi, my name is Father Dan Cambra. I'm a Marian of the Immaculate Conception, the religious community that operates the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. And today I'd like to speak about St. Albert the Great. St. Albert the Great is one of the early scholastics. He is also the, a Dominican and a Bishop of Cologne. He was the man who was the student for St. Thomas Aquinas. And as is often said, great individuals stand on the shoulders of great individuals. So it was in the case of St. Thomas Aquinas. While he sometimes referred to as the son doctor of the church, truly the greatest of all the doctors of the church, still, still he would not have been able to achieve many of the insights that he did achieve without the work of his mentor and teacher, Albert Magnus, Albert the Great. Albert the Great wrote several different books, and certainly he's the one who's most responsible for translating Maimonides as well as Averroes and several other of the Muslim philosophers who themselves were the ones who transmitted to Albert the Great the philosophies of the Greeks in the pre-Christian era. St. Albert the Great did not write uh, a lot on friendship, but he did write some very interesting essays on friendship. De Bono was his first, and Tractus II, he expounds on it even more fully, and finally, in Supra Ethica, he talks about the three degrees of friendship. I remember reading this when I was a seminarian, oh, lo, three decades ago now. And the fact that it still sticks in my memory is probably an indication of how beautifully, clearly, and lyrically Albert the Great wrote. He talked first of all about friendship which is useful. That's like friends between business associates, friendships that are built on the idea that if I do you good, then you will do me good. If I have something that you need, then I deal with you fairly, then our friendship is useful to both of us. This is not a friendship that lasts beyond the present situation but it can be a useful friendship for every Christian. And so Christians should cultivate useful friendships, mindful of the fact that Jesus tells us that the people of this life, this world, are a lot more industrious about developing things than are people who are other-minded, people who are heaven-bound. The next degree of friendship is pleasurable friendship, or to use a more, uh, shall we say, accurate philosophical term, delectable friendship. This is the friendships that we have with people with whom we share a similar political view, or maybe a similar likes in food or drink, or sports, or leisure, or entertainment. These are the people whose company we actually enjoy, not for any utilitarian reason, but simply because we share with them a delight in similar recreations, in the normal day-to-day -day living. These are the people whose friendship sometimes spurs us on to holiness, but not necessarily. These are the friendships that are usually most enduring in our lives. The friendship between a husband and wife obviously falls into this category. The friendship between two people who come to a point of romantic affix, uh, affiliation would certainly be in this category. But it also includes just plain friends, buddies, chums, the kind of people that we associate with freely and by our own choice. 
We call that old saying, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Well, these are the people that we choose to be friends with. They're not necessarily useful friends, but they are certainly the friends who bring us delight and pleasure in this life. The third degree of friendship, and the most important for a Christian, is what Albert the Great referred to as honorable friendship. Friendship that leads to eternal honor in heaven. Honor that's given to us by God when he turns to us at the judgment and says, Come, my beloved. Come, my good and faithful servant. Come, O Son of the God Most High. It is precisely those friendships that lead us to holiness. Friends who have passed possibly even through the stages of both being useful friends and being friends of a pleasurable friendship. Sometimes these are the people who are most important to us because they're the ones who tell us when we're doing the right thing and they're the ones who encourage us to do the better thing. They're the ones who encourage us to put at the use of God and his church all of our talents, all of our treasure, all of our time. To each and every one of us, God sends friends, utilitarian, pleasurable, and honorable. For us as Christians, and especially for those of us who desire eternal salvation, we need to embrace fully those friends who will guide us in holiness, whether they are our mentors, our confessors, our priests, pastors, our associates. It can be anyone of any age, of any sex. And it's important for us to recognize that God is the giver of all good gifts. God is the giver of honorable friendship in our lives. And to him, everything must give glory. May God bless you with honorable friends. As we call to mind today, St. Albert the Great. May God bless you.